You know the way to battle a lie? With the truth. No. With a bigger lie. Peter? Eli? If all you know of Alan Cumming is his role on The Good Wife, well, you may be in for a bit of a surprise. Because as good as he is on that show, there is truly much more to Alan, an actor who is impossible to typecast. He can play it straight. I think you're my first goddess. He can play it not so straight. If you know what I mean. And sometimes, he just burns like a supernova. By the way, that performance in Cabaret won him a Tony Award. Now, not surprisingly, Alan, born and raised in the splendidly named town of Aberfeldy, Scotland, has worked with some of the greats, the notorious Stanley Kubrick and Tom Cruise, with whom Alan shared a memorable scene in Kubrick's eyes wide shut. How can I help you? Can you please ring Mr. Nightingale's room for me? And if you're talking greats, there's Alan's friend Liza Minnelli, who recently presented Alan with Amphar's Award of Courage in recognition of his commitment to the fight against HIV and AIDS. Please say hello to Alan Cumming! <laughs> How are things, sir? Not too bad. Enjoying my little jaunt to Toronto. A little Amphar event for you? A little Amphar event, yeah. And congratulations on your recognition for that in America as well. Thank you, thank you very much, it, yes. How did you come to be involved with them? With Amphar? Uh, I think I first, you know, attended some events and then they asked me to... I, I hosted things around the world and I sing. That means that's shorthand for singing. That's yeah. international code for singing. Yeah. Uh, I sing at, at some other things and, I don't know, they're just a really great organization, you know, and, and I went to China, actually. I went, I did this sponsored walk for them along the Great Wall of China. <laughs> what was that like? Crazy. Yeah? Yeah, it was nuts. And it was funny, because I thought it was going to be, you know, they gave this list of rucksacks and special things you had to take. And, uh, and it was quite rough, but each night you would, uh, you would like, you'd get up in the morning and then you'd start walking. And, and when you arrived at the, whatever you're going to, you know, you'd come off the wall to camp for the night, <laughs> your tent would have miraculously appeared there. <laughs> and also there was a little, like, uh, little kitchen and, and people made you food. So it wasn't, it was kind of luxury camping. So you were glamping more than camping. I was glamping, that's yeah. right. I, knew, I forgot about that, yes. I mean, the idea of uh, recognizing uh, that, that you can, it's one thing to host an award show, but it's another thing to go on a walk that, yeah. that, that it requires a commitment. Like, so obviously this is something that's really important to you. It is, you know, because I think, um, especially in places like China, where they are now dealing with the AIDS epidemic and it's, in a, you know, and, and are so not prepared or weren't prepared for it. Um, and I just feel like I've always felt like that uh, AIDS has still has such a stigma about it, even though we've moved on and, you know, I, as a gay person, I find it's something that we're still countering, this sort of idea that gay people were in some way, you know, invented it. And so there's a, there's a lot of work to be done in that. And, and also there's a lot of people who still, uh, you know, are going untreated and, and it can be managed now. But ultimately, you know, you want to find a cure for such a terrible disease that's destroying so many lives. Do you remember where you, where you were in your mind and where, where you were just geographically? That, you know that, that window, that 84, 85 to 94, 95, that yeah. first decade where people were really coming to terms with it. And that's when it was still, it, it was no longer called GRID, but people were talking about it still as such. Yes. You know? Well, I, I actually remember, I was at... Uh, I can actually, you know, I was at drama school when I first heard about HIV, and I, 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 sort of feel so lucky that I remember what it was like to have, you know, before safe sex was even born, to actually have um, unsafe sex, I suppose, uh, and it was, it was, it was a really crazy thing. In Britain, they did this really good, like one of the few good things that Maggie Thatcher did uh, was she did this campaign. Uh, well, she didn't, but she, you know, endorsed this campaign which was that it had a big, huge iceberg, so it said AIDS on it. And that's all it was, was a really scary music. And John Hurt did the voiceover. And it was t absolutely terrifying, because, you know, it's just basically, we don't know, and there's all this other stuff that you could actually, you know, underneath the, the iceberg. Right, if you're not paying attention, you're going to crash into it and it will sink you. That's right, yes, yeah. and Kate Winslet will be there. <laughs> and, uh... But listen, our heart will go on, and that's okay, <laughs> you know? I hope so. And so you had that... So th so you came of age in that, in that moment? Yes. I mean, so, yeah, I mean, really, that was... Uh, like, I remember at drama school, the whole thing about everyone having to have condoms, and it was, it was really terrifying, that campaign, and it really put the fear of God into a whole generation of people, which, sadly, that hasn't happened since. And I find especially... It's another thing why I work with Amphar so much is the lack of education about sex in general, actually, in America. Yeah. I, I imagine it's better in Canada because 
everything's better in Canada, you know. How, <laughs> we'll do all right. <laughs> back to something you just said, you identified as a... I mean, you said it quietly, but as a gay person, and I always, un I always thought, so I say it loudly. no, no, just that, that, <laughs> that with you it was a little more fluid well, than it that. Is, it is, yes, it's like LGBTQIIPP, right? It's like a long. If you cover people who don't know, yes, yeah, pansexual, questioning, or questioning. Sort of pansexual. That's right. I was, I always think that's. I once got called that, and I was, I said it's like I have sex with pots, yeah. and <laughs> which is legal goats. in many states. Yeah, you know? yeah. <laughs> It's said safe sex, yeah. uh, especially if a, if a Pyrex, you know, it's very safe. Um, <laughs> but, uh, yeah, I mean, I, I would, I would, uh, I would uh, define myself really as bisexual, but yeah. I don't mind, I don't care what you call... I mean, I, I think it's really important to just... You know, the more you just are open and honest, I think the less... Uh, well, the more people hear that and the, and the, and the less it becomes a deal. But I, I mean, technically, I would say I was bisexual. So I'm, not, I'm not at all questioning. No, no, like you know what you are. I know right? what I am. And you've been married. I've been married to both, both genders. sexes. Yeah. Not at the same time. <laughs> but I, I'm married now to a man, and I used to be married to a woman. What did it mean Some to you? Some call it greedy. <laughs> <laughs> Others call it liberated. Yeah. <laughs> Others or, call it life. As you get older, what are the kind of roles you want to play now? Ones that maybe you couldn't have played before? Um... <laughs> I don't know. I mean, it's so funny. Like, I, I never thought I'd be... I'd play... A Jewish man in a suit, uh, but I do that on The Good Wife all the time. That's like my, you know, my day job is, is playing this uh, political uh, uptight person. Do you get doing the TV show? You, I imagine you don't have a lot of time to go shoot other stuff and films and all that. Are you in that? Well, the sh we I shoot maybe like three or four out of an episode, which is like eight, eight or nine days. So half, maybe less than half the time. That's all right. I saw I was at um, Josh, who plays Will in the show. He got married, and I was at his wedding, and um, I was talking to Juliana, and she's, you know in every single day, and she sort of says, tell me, what, have you, what are you doing? What have you been up to? Yeah. And I just sort of list, do this list of fun things I've been doing that she hasn't been able to so do. So she lives through you, or does she resent you? It's, it's, a, it's a combination of the two. Is it now? Yes. <laughs> I remember just before I got that, I actually thought, I really need to play more grown-up people, you know, people who just aren't crazy. <laughs> um, and, uh, and then it happened. And so, I don't know, I, I, I actually don't have that sort of... I, I don't go like that in life about things I want to do. I'm more like this, and, and I just sort of anticipate what comes to me and have a, have a go at it. You're a pan actor. <laughs> I am. I'm a pan actor. <laughs> a pansexual actor. <laughs> Stick around more with Alan right after this. <laughs> All right, coming up. When Alan Met Tom, next. very well spoken, but they weren't the kind of people you'd like to fool around with, if you know what I mean. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it goes back a little bit, right? Yeah, that's a long time ago. A long... God, look how different I look. I see myself on the monitor. Yeah, that, isn't that funny? Yeah. I mean, that was I at mean, the end of Kubrick, of course, but in his yeah. life, but what was that experience like? It was absolutely great, because, you know, I, I, uh, it was, I think everyone knew it was kind of going to be his last film, so I... Uh, but it just took so long for it to happen. It shot for a year and a half. <laughs> That's incredible, <laughs> and, man. I know. Can you imagine? And, uh, and I came onto it like a, ye a year in, and I auditioned like six, seven times for like, you know, one scene. And so I did it, and I'd never met Stanley. And I went to the, uh, on the first day, and uh, it was time for me to go to the, to the set. And so there was Tom Cruise and Stanley Kubrick. And I'd met Tom before. He was very nice. And I went, I went, hey, Stanley, you know, it's nice to meet you finally, I'm Alan. And he, he was all like, you're not American. And I was like, uh, I know, I'm Scottish. <laughs> and he went, well, you're American on the tape. And I went, yeah, that's because I'm an actor, Stanley. <laughs> you said that to Kubrick? I said that because it was like 6 o'clock in the morning, and I was just like, screw you, old man, you know? <laughs> Uh, uh, this, is not a, this is not King Lear I'm playing here. I just was, and it was just too early, and I just thought, I mean, kind of, you know, in, in retrospect, well, not in retrospect, I'm, I'm glad I said it, because yeah. it, it, he sort of went, huh. And after that, we got on like a house on fire. I mean, really, really had a lovely time, and I shot in the film for a, a week, and we just laughed like drains, and, and then also we kept in touch afterwards. But yeah, he was lovely. I mean, I think 
if I'd gone, if I'd cowed and been like, oh, sorry, Stanley, then I think, you know, it's sort of a self-fulfilling prophecy. He probably would have acted more scary towards me, like, right. like you hear he acted towards other actors. Yeah, it's a pretty iconic scene, though. If you think about it, you're up there. It's a Kubrick film with yeah. Kubrick, and it is Tom Cruise. And it's Tom Cruise who, and, and there's the whole kind of, you know, Tom Cruise's baggage, uh, I think, helped that scene as well. It did, yeah. Well, do you know what I mean? I mean, the, the, the sort of all the rumours about him being gay. Well, I mean, I, I certainly didn't... I have a, quite a good gaydar, I think, but I didn't get any from him. He didn't... He didn't <laughs> but... of anything. But uh, I think, in a way, why that seems so, you know, pe memorable is the idea that someone so blatantly coming on to Tom Cruise yeah. is uh, so like, oh my gosh, you know, he's going to get sued. It doesn't happen like that. Yeah, no. All right, so I'm going to answer rapid-fire questions oh. and see how you answer, okay? okay. What's your go-to song in the shower? Uh, I think it would be um, Someone Like You by Adele. Yeah. I, I, I don't... How would that go? I don't... How would that... <laughs> <laughs> you know that one. No, I'm not... I don't yeah, goes, Never mind, I'll find someone like you. Do you I wish nothing but that Weep uncontrollably. <laughs> how do you feel about ageing? Um, I actually really embrace it. I feel... I'm nearly 50. And it's kind of... When you say that, you think, Crikey, what an old... <laughs> Person. You can say whatever you, you want. Yeah, can I? Uh, uh, you know, that feels, it sounds much more uh, bigger than, I, than, it, than it feels to me. And I, um, I actually, I'm actually, I, I, quite, I like being older because of the weight and the experience and things that you, you gain and you have. And, and yet I love the fact that, you know, I, I still seem to have the energy that I had 25 years ago. It's a pleasure to see you, man. Thanks for coming in. Thank you, George. It was fun. Yeah, okay. I'm coming in, right? All right, we'll be right back. Thank you. I'm going to go back. I did too. I did too. I did too. I did too.